Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette in our series, Is It Worth It? Today we discuss the iconic Clark's Desert Boot, the history, the style, the construction, the different materials, and of course, whether it's worth it, your money or not. <laughs> In 1941, Nathan Clark, who was the great-grandson of the founder James Clark, was deployed to Burma in Myanmar, which is north of Thailand. Before he left, his family requested to keep an eye out for new shoe models or anything that might be advantageous for their company. While abroad, Nathan noticed very simplistic chukka boots with a crepe sole that was worn by officers. When he inquired, he figured out that most of those came from a bazaar in Cairo, Egypt. He was immediately fascinated by that simplistic boot with that innovative new sole that wasn't really around in traditional menswear, and he was convinced that would be a great idea for the company. So he sent sketches back home in the hopes that the company would pick up production. The desert boot was somewhat revolutionary in the sense that suede uppers and crepe soles were something associated with lower classes, not elegant gentlemen. Even though Nathan was really enthusiastic, the company board thought it will never sell. Determined and convinced of his idea, Nathan crossed the pond to exhibit his shoe in 1949 at the Chicago Shoe Show. There he was able to show it to influential editors and people in general liked it. It was a more casual boot alternative that had been unseen at this point in time. With all that positive feedback and encouragement, he went back to England and produced the first range of desert boots, which were sold exclusively in the US in 1950. The original boot looked pretty similar to this. It was a sand-colored suede, which he got from Charles F. Steed, which is an English tannery specializing in suede letters that still exists today. He chose the color sand because it closely resembled the sand in Egypt, and so the name Desert Boot really made sense. At the same time, the boot referenced its desert origins. In the US, it was a successful boot, and because of that, it eventually sold in the UK as well. It became popular in the mod cultures in the 60s and 70s, and it was worn by famous movie stars such as Steve McQueen or others like Bob Dylan. Even the Beatles wore them. While the original Desert Boot was made in England, made of English leather, it is now mostly made in Asia, with a few exceptions of making it in Italy. That being said, the Desert Boot is still by far the most iconic and best-selling shoe in the whole Clark's lineup. So now the big question, are Clark's Desert Boots worth it? So first of all, there are three versions on the market today. Ironically, all of them are called original. First, you have the original in a suede leather with a crepe sole that costs $130. It's made in Vietnam, just like the other original suede boots that use a waxed leather on top. It has a nice pull-up effect, but it's not quite the original in my opinion. For $190, you get a original Clark's Desert Boot that is made in Italy with a crepe sole and English suede leather from Charles F. Steed, the same tannery that created the original boot. So first of all, let's determine the difference between the $190 Clark's Desert Boot and a $130 version. Supposedly, the expensive version is more hard-wearing and luxurious, and I have to say, the leather is quite nice. It's a soft, supple suede leather, and on the inside, you can find a scotch grain like texture. What that means, it's simply a suede that is reversed, which is very typical of a leather that you see from Steed. On the other hand, the less expensive version has a suede-like texture on both sides, which means the smoother outside was sanded down, and overall, the $190 boot has definitely a more superior leather. I've had other shoes with letters from Charles F. Steed, and it's a very durable and very nice leather. I think on the Clark Desert boots, they did a good job on not making it too soft. I have a pair of boots with steel leather from Ellen Edmonds, which is quite soft and comfortable to wear, but at the same time, it doesn't keep its shape. Now, of course, the country of manufacturing is different. Vietnam lacks the heritage tradition of England and Italy, yet at the same time, the labor costs are much lower, which are passed on to you as a consumer. That being said, quality can be made anywhere, just like crap, and if you wanna learn more about the discussions of the impact of where something is made, please check out this guy on our website here. At the end of the day, you have skilled laborers in Vietnam that are eager to learn new skills, and if taught correctly, they can turn out a very consistent product that's very similar to what you'd find from 
England or Italy, at least when we talk about a factory-made shoe setting. In terms of construction, the expensive and the inexpensive boot are the same. Both have some kind of stitching, both have a crepe sole, even though it's different. The Italian-made one has a more textured crepe sole, which is typically what you find in crepe sole shoes. The less expensive $130 version has smoother crepe soles, and it's definitely a different crepe. Personally, I prefer the $190 version. If you look at the last, it seems identical to me, and there's really no difference between the made in Italy and the made in Vietnam version. As I mentioned, the leather is quite a bit different. The steed leather is definitely the best, and thus also on a more expensive shoe. The wax leather on the Clark's Desert Boot is quite a bit harder than the suede ones, and because the originally was a suede, I would personally always prefer to have a suede desert boot and skip the wax leather one. That being said, the wax leather develops a nice patina, it has a pull-up effect, and you'll see any kind of scratch you create on it. So if that's something you like, it's definitely worth looking into. When it comes to the welt, you see a higher stitch density on the Italian version than on the less expensive version. Normally, on a Goodyear welted shoe, a higher stitch density indicates a higher quality, but in this case, the shoes are not Goodyear welted, and I don't think it matters in everyday life. Both versions have two rows of eyelets. The less expensive version has metal rivets. The Italian version doesn't have any rivets. The shoelaces on the Italian version are better. They're waxed cotton. On the other ones, they're just regular cotton or maybe poly cotton. So you can tell there are slight differences. The original desert boot from Nathan Clark had orange contrast stitching on the boot, which made it different. None of the boots that I have here actually have that stitching, which again makes me wonder why they call them the original. Clearly, they must only refer to the style of the last. Inside of the shoe, you don't find any lining, as discussed before, and there's an insole that is slightly padded in the back. Interestingly, the made in Italy is highlighted versus the made in Vietnam is not. In terms of fit, walkability, and comfort, I find them to be all very similar. In terms of sizing, I think the Clarks run to the size, if at all, a little smaller. I got a US 11 or a UK 10. Sometimes I wear a UK 10 and a half, so keep that in mind. Otherwise, I think they have a very average fit. They're a little wider in the heel, but I have very slim heels. If you usually wear Goodyear welted dress shoes, the Clarks will feel a lot softer. If you're used to trainers, you might think you have to break them in. It's all a point of perspective. So, is it worth it? What's the verdict? I think the $190 version definitely wins on the quality front. It has nicer leather, nicer stitching, nicer details, better shoelaces, and definitely a better leather. In terms of value, I think the Made in Vietnam version wins simply because the slight differences are not worth the $60 difference, which is almost 50% based on a lower $130 price point. So apart from that, the big question is, are Clark's Desert Boots worth it in general? Well, it depends. I would say yes, they are worth it if your wardrobe in general leans towards the casual end. Because of the crepe sole, these boots are only suited for casual outings. They're also not a winter boot or suited for colder weather at all. Because there's no lining and just a single layer of leather, your feet would freeze very quickly. I think Clark's Desert Boots are worth it if you appreciate the understated, simplistic look of them, and if you wear a lot of denim or jeans, maybe chinos. They're definitely not suited to your wardrobe if you wear a lot of suits, maybe dress pants, or other kinds of slacks, because they simply clash in terms of formality. So if you plan to wear them frequently, I think they're worth $130. If you want to splurge on the $190 version, you definitely don't make a mistake. But if you're tight on money, you're just fine going with the $130 version. So what color and style combination should you go for? Well, the original one is a sand-colored suede boot with a crepe sole. And I think if you're interested in authenticity, that's the version I would buy. Of course, that light tone of leather also stains more easily, shows dirts and signs of wear very quickly. So if you prefer, you can go with darker suedes, or if you're not a friend of suede, you can also go with other colors. Overall, personally, I'd stick in the brown range. If you want to be a little more flamboyant, you can go with blue or other bolder colors. But at the end of the day, that limits you considerably in terms of flexibility and variety in your wardrobe, because you can only wear it with very specific pants and outfits. I think Clark's Desert Boots are not worth it overall if you like to dress up, 
because in that case, I suggest you go with a leather sole. It creates a nicer sound and it's simply more elegant. Personally, I'm also not a big fan of the Clark's Desert Boot Last. It's very round, boring, and a bit clunky in my opinion. I prefer longer lasts, maybe with a slight chisel, such as on this Chaka boot here. So overall, for myself, I don't think a Clark's Desert Boot is worth the investment, simply because I have other Chaka boots that I like more. If I didn't have a Chaka boot at all, I would probably go for the $190 version that it's made in Italy, simply because I appreciate the better leather. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell, so new Is It Worth It videos come right to your inbox. And if you like this series, please check out the others. I'm certain you'll love them as well. So in today's video, I'm wearing a very casual outfit, which I would typically wear if it was a frequent Chaka boot wearer. It consists of a button-down collar dress shirt with a checked pattern in white, dark gray, and blue. My pants are denim or jeans in a dark blue wash that is a little weathered, and my socks are shadow stripe socks in blue and red from Fort Belvedere. Honestly, I could combine this outfit with all three Chaka boots. The sand one would provide quite a bit of contrast, and is the classic. The waxed leather one with a pull-up effect goes well because it's a medium brown, and even the dark chocolate brown would look very good with it. The only thing to keep in mind is to match your belt color to your boots. I know it's difficult to match it 100% exactly, so you don't have to go for that. Try to keep it in the same realm and you'll look quite smart. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.